Uh, I think the first thing I wanted to say was that uh, it's important not to make too many judgments about civil society on the basis of current events and enthusiasms. Um, I go to lots of meetings on civil society, far too many for my health, to be honest, and I constantly hear civil society is in decline, civil society is flourishing, civil society is being re-energised by social media, social enterprise, the millennial generation, philanthropic capitalism, or it's being destroyed by the very same things. Civil society's future is like this, or it's like that, and none of these things are true. Or you could say elements of them are true at some point in time in somewhere in the world. The reality is that civil societies, which to me just means the way which, in which people organise themselves for collective action, has been continually reshaping itself for at least 200 years uh, and will continue to do so, uh, but not in ways we can predict or control. That's probably the only generalisation about civil society that I think stands. Um, they've been reshape reshaping themselves in response to internal and external constraints and opportunities. And we can try and understand those changes as best we can, as we're trying to do here. That's important. Uh, and to assess their consequences for the issues that concern us. But the future is something obviously that's indeterminate. Uh, when I apply that lens across that world, that very open-ended uh, lens, I would say we are set over the next 25, 30 years for some especially interesting times in the, in the world of civil society, precisely because the forces acting for and against the authentic expression of voluntary citizen action are very finely balanced. Lots of positives, lots of negatives. No one quite knows how they're going to work themselves out. And that's partly, and I'll come back to this in a moment, because many of the trends we're going to be talking about are simultaneously challenges and opportunities. They are simultaneously threats and opportunities. And how we uh, work out which way they head or what mixture is going to be influential is a very important task for this community. On the positive side, it's true that North America and European models, which have dominated the world of civil society research and funding, are being challenged by the rise of China and Brazil, as, as uh, Brian was saying, and other countries with their own traditions of organising and collective action and, and governance. They're being challenged by the rise, I think, of more overtly religious and ideological expressions of citizenship uh, that may open different avenues for change. It's also true that civic action inside and around the economy is growing and diversifying, and that's exciting. And it's partly because no one knows how economic growth and human flourishing will be combined together in the future, will be harmonised. That's the central question, I think facing a lot of societies. My guess is that we will see the emergence of a much larger social economy, but it will not replace the political roles of civil society, contrary to much current thinking about the supposed blurring of boundaries between different sectors. New technologies, yes, they will make certain connections stronger or easier or faster. They will accelerate certain forms of feedback and accountability, at least if you have access to them. And that should facilitate the emergence of different kinds of activism in political systems which should become more porous over time, unless those new spaces are also closed up by vested interests, which is a, a perfect possibility because technologies and new forms of activism and new sources of finance and so on, these things are simply tools. They're not solutions in and of themselves. Climate change I may push citizen action away from its current focus on the fairer distribution of abundance, towards the much harder task of managing scarcity and its personal and political implications, because we know that copying the consumption patterns of the rich world is not a path that's going to be sustainable. And that will certainly shift, really, the whole paradigm around which development NGOs have built their activities since 1945. And because we don't know what policies will be needed or will work in the future dominated by ecological limits, because we haven't hit them yet, I suspect there's going to be a lot more experimentation in research and advocacy and public engagement in order to develop constituencies capable of argument and ideas generation and consensus building across the lines of difference and not simply in convincing decision makers that they should do A or B or C because we don't know what A or B or C will be. So that's all the good stuff. On the less positive side, I would say that is becoming more difficult for most people to express themselves at the most simple and basic level as active citizens. 
Why? Because of rising insecurity and inequality and corporate domination and political constraints that range from the soft, semi-official censorship and widespread erosion of the public sphere to the hard, outright repression and so on. And these things make even the most elemental expressions of civil society more difficult. Grassroots organising, the ex exercise of accountability, preserving and extending non-market values of cooperation and solidarity, giving birth to new social movements that have some sticking power and traction over time, speaking truth to power, protecting the possibility, and this is the most important thing for me in the whole debate about civil society, protecting the possibility that, that societies can be thoroughly transformed in the image of love and justice and not simply tweaked around the margins in order to become less violent and unequal. And I think if there's anything that really worries me in what's happening in current trends, it is the, that that possibility of fundamental transformation, civically powered transformation, you might think of it, is at risk. Secondly, it's clear that cultural and ideological differences do not disappear as incomes rise, a major surprise to many theorists. So we are going to need much more, many more bridges and mediating structures that help people resolve those differences peacefully. And that's going to be very difficult because the ones that we have are being hollowed out and the ones that are replacing them, largely technology-based, are not very good at engaging people across constituencies as opposed to strengthening in-group ties. And thirdly, the civic innovations that are much in vogue today, network-based organising, for example, venture philanthropy, social innovation in general, the mantra of the moment, have cost as well as benefits about which we know relatively little, partly because we're being constantly oversold a romantic view of their possibilities. Even something like inequality has ambiguous effects because even though it does make it more difficult for people to participate in civic life, it also makes them angry enough to overthrow their governments or occupy Wall Street in protest at where the world is heading. So, and this is my concluding point, my takeaway point, if you like, because all these different forces, even in that brief account of them, you can see are quite finely balanced. They can go this way, they can get that way, they form, they recombine in different ways. We don't know what's going to come out of them. I think we should focus on the emerging middle ground uh, that's taking place between the challenges and the opportunities. Or to put it another way, we should focus on places where civil society groups are consciously blending and re-blending elements from the old and the new in order to illuminate some successful pathways into the future. For example, how to combine the best of virtual and actual organising, or street protest and social media, or sustainable financing and a mission for social transformation, or participation in electoral and dialogic politics, or civic traditions from Oxford to Rio to Timbuktu, because that's where I think the biggest payoffs will be. Thanks.